Hello. I am officially cool because I have a leather jacket. Molly, the person who talks about things. So now that I'm cool, I, I'm going to talk about um, fame because cool people become famous, but also not cool people become famous. So this is my take on fame. Fame. Fame is weird. People seem to really look up to celebrities, worship celebrities, um, whether they're actors, musicians, politicians, not as much. But I feel like people, especially in America, we're obsessed with sort of um, stalking, online stalking, um, these celebrities and almost idealize their life because, of course... On the internet, you can filter what you put out, so everything you see in their life is glamorous. And um, I kind of feel bad for famous people. And I feel like most people don't because they're like, well, they're rich and they've got everything, so what can they complain about? Their security and safety is at risk and th their sense of normalcy or um, anonymity is pretty much gone, depending on what level you're at. I mean, like, we really underappreciate things like going to the grocery store without being bothered. And maybe some people would like to be bothered. Some people might enjoy fame. But I feel like a lot of people who become some level of famous were really just freaking good at what they were doing. And because they care a whole lot and because they have drive and passion and they want to change the world. There's a lot of idealists are like that where they want to change the world and and then they think they can. And so they work, 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 work at what whatever their craft is and whether they're picked up by the right person at the right time or they work really hard for years and gain traction, they finally get to that place. But I, I feel like I'm not famous, but I feel like when they get to that place, it's not fulfilling or not as fulfilling as they thought. Like, you hear, yeah, chase your dreams and all that stuff, but it's like, I feel like a true artist is constantly seeking for what they don't have. So even fame, the idea of fame, once they have that, it's, that's not what they were seeking. It's always the next song. Or the, the next painting. The artist is always looking for fulfillment in their art and their work. And they might have it for a moment, but then, it, then it's lost and they seek it again. And they're not going to find that through fame or fortune. I feel like an artist is going to never find that. And never feel that full satisfaction. Unless they do a lot of work on themselves. But still, their art... Joni Mitchell it says her art is shit, you know, her music. She's like, my paintings are word at, words at, my music, no, that's all crap. She can't even appreciate that because a lot of artists are very hard on themselves. It's like no matter what level you will be at, whether you are non-famous, medium famous, <laughs> extremely famous, it's going to be extremely challenging find satisfaction because it's not about the fame. It's not about that. Um, it's usually not about that, I don't think, for a true artist. And then there are, of course, entertainers, and that's a whole different field, I feel like. There's some crossover, but I feel like a lot of those who want to entertain is one thing, like country covers in downtown Nashville. Um, and then there's who there there are those who won't write a hit, refuse to write a hit, and will only write what's from their heart. And both are different sort of crafts that can be appreciated. And um, I don't know, I think part of, I think entertainment is easier to feel fulfilled because it's more about the present um, or the project that will entertain for the present. But art is about the past and the future. It's not about the presentation. Presentation 
present is in the word presentation, and that goes with entertainment, I feel like. When you present your art, that's a different thing. And a lot of artists are uncomfortable with that because it's a whole different beast. But when they're creating art, it's like... Um, I feel like it's the subconscious speaking to the conscious, which comes from a lot of the past. And then it's always about the next, the next best song. Is this making any sense? Um, I don't know if it is. I think when you picture this idea of your art impacting a crap ton of people that looks similar to fame, because that's how you reach the masses. But it's, I don't know if it will ever feel full. I feel like, I mean, maybe in moments, but I feel like it's fleeting. Fame, fame, fame. Fame is shit. Fame is like, you dedicate your whole life to being out in the public eye, and then when you die, you have your legacy left behind, and your songs can inspire people forever, maybe. Forever until we're gone. Until we're all gone, kapish kapash, we're all gone. And once once we are all gone, then what, what did it really matter? Just imagine leaving the house and having a bunch of stalkers hiding in bushes. I don't think that's exactly what it's like, but... For, I mean, some of the big ones, it is. You know, they don't have that... They don't have that sanity. You know, you should be able to go out on the streets and just, like, be ignored. That that feels great, feeling anonymous. Because we feel it so often, we don't appreciate it, and we want more. We always want more. But I feel like once you cross over to that path of of having your privacy sacrificed, then then you regret it and you're like, oh, I wish I could be anonymous. You want what you can't have. Just like when you cut your hair, then you're like, oh, I wish it were longer. When you have your longer hair, I wish it were shorter. If you have naturally straight hair, you wish it were curly. Like people are just so, if you're tall, you wish you were short. If you're short, you wish you were tall. People are so unsatisfied with who they are and what they have and want what they can't have or don't have. And this is just a, a generalization, I understand, because some people are very good at gratitude and self-talk and help and get to that point where they're happy with what they have. And that's why I think gratitude is such an important tool, because we have so much that we don't think about. We think about what we don't have, because that's what we're focused and driven to think about as humans. We're, we're never satisfied, and we're constantly seeking more whatever that is. We want a fullness. We are built as humans to not be satisfied, whether we have everything that someone doesn't. That's why some of the people who have the least are able to find happiness in, in simple things, That whereas it's, you know, the richest person in the world will still... The richest person in the world still has something to complain about. And I think that's fair because they're human. But people get pissed off if famous people are complaining or if, you know, first world problems. Yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they are first world problems. But they're problems. And, you know... No matter what, there will be problems, no matter who you are. And it's like, how dare you? Because it's so funny. In comparison to your life, you hear someone complaining about their, I don't even know, what did they, their yacht? Let's say that their yacht had a leak or something. And they're like, ugh, what a hassle. And you're like, you have a freaking yacht. No matter what they're going to find something to be unsatisfied with because they're human. Now, I'm talking about humans as a whole. I feel like artists are more likely to be unsatisfied and have that, that void inside of them that they're constantly trying to fill. And they see how it could be filled, maybe. They have a vision or a dream. 
but it still might not be enough. <sighs> but one step at a time, right? And you can change the world of someone else's world, not necessarily the whole world. So if you change one world at a time, then that should feel good. Sometimes our goals are too high as INFJs, whereas people, those are expectations that might never be met. And if you do reach it, there will be other things that are being sacrificed. And are you willing to sacrifice those? What is it that you want in your life? I feel like we come to a point when we realize that everything we want or need is right with us. We just need to realize that and work on remembering that the future is now if we want it to be. I don't know though, I think some people, some famous people are able to find happiness in being famous and their own sort of normal within that abnormal because that's only abnormal to us, that's normal to them. So what the frick is normal? And what is your normal? And what do you want your normal to be? And what do you normally do? And what do you normally want your normal to do? I would normally want an abnormal normalcy. Where I am changing the world and helping the masses. And I suppose I'll take a picture with you. The idea of fame and reaching the masses, I wish that they didn't have to cross over. I wish you could just inspire, 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 and be anonymous. And that's why writing is so, uh, so delicious sounding. Delicious is absolutely not the word that I would have wanted to use. But I said it. That's why writing is appealing to me. Because I can choose a word that's not delicious by thinking before I write. That was a random ramble bought to you by me. And I'm doing something very scary tonight, by the way. This is my first time ever doing stand-up comedy, which is why I'm trying to dress like a badass. <laughs> because I'm trying to look like the least like how I feel so that I can really, you know, trick them. But um, my jokes are weird, and we'll see... If they like it, I decided to do this because it's like really a scary thing to me and I want to do things that are scary because I feel like that will push me to grow and learn and become a better version of myself. And if they laugh too, that's a plus. I will wait while I breathe till the end.